Hey, Welsh Drag Metals here. Today I will be showing how to paint Tyranid, Hive Leviathan, Gene Stealer, Biomorphs. A type of alien. These are from the Warhammer 40,000 universe. This one is indeed of finishing up. Remarkably easy paint scheme to these. These are the only two colours used. Pallid Witch Flesh and Carolberg Crimson, which is a wash of that sort of strange purple colour in all of the recesses and pallid witch flesh has been dry brushed on top of white so and very very simple paint schemes on these sort of things to achieve good results these are the ones that have been finished up as you can see they look amazing now this is a brood here of Tyranid gene stealers, but one is missing, that is the one I'll be painting. They'll have different biomorphs, some have like spit acid, others like the, the one I'll be painting, these ones have feeder tendrils, which are brain sucking tendrils. And others have like poison, as you can see, poisonous claws and sacks and such. Others have dart spitters, the spit lethal long-range tongue dart things to do so, pretty alien and they also also have four arms diamond hard claws all this is from the warhammer universe these creatures are essentially from another part of the warhammer multiverse they come from outside by that i mean from outside of the galactic plane of Warhammer, so there's some sort of giant, essentially whale type creature. Well, they're composed of many, many tendrils, which are like tentacles, obviously. It's quite watery, this pallid witch flesh. It's been around for some time. Using a very small brush here, as you can see. <coughs> Best to use the smaller brushes, leave that aside. There's an old hatch from a Imperial Guard Bastion. There's actually not too much space on this board. I don't need that right now. It's been a while since I've painted and I fancy to do some and finish up these Tyranids. Shouldn't take it too long either given the spinal ridges at the moment on the gene stealer very small brush, smaller the better I, I should think with these ones this is just tidying up after all, doesn't have to be completely perfect as this is an organic creature after all symmetry, too much symmetry would be bad such a creature. And then also bred on a sort of weapons pod thing on an even larger creature. Gene stealers are generally made from humans though. Corrupted, infected humans, as Tyranids are essentially a sporific type life form, like many. Making them extremely resilient. And you can't eat them either. It's not something you can eat, Tyranid. Naturally, that would poison you. And even turn you into some grotesque Tyranid creation. So, monsters indeed. So it looks similar to Alien, probably inspired by Alien, these things, but they're not, even though some of them actually do even have acid blood, but they also have four arms, so yeah, a bit different, but not by much, but their backstory is dramatically different, I suppose. As they're not created like that, they're created by another creature that is also a Tyranid. 
not created in our lab, in other words. So some of the spinal ridges done on the top side. Let's do some of the head ridges now very carefully. Neaten it up. Very, very watery this pallid witch flesh at the moment. Should have dried it out some. Pretty sure I put some water in it as last time it was very dry. I was hoping some of it would evaporate off by then. But apparently not. Very, very small cranial ridges on the skull there. They do look cool if you get them right, even though they're only millimetres or so across. Do the veiny bits now, or in between the veins of the skull. If possible, very, very delicate. Works that one. Oof. Try and just highlight that. Oh, that's working. Cool, cool. And the ear, almost imperceivably small, that ear. <laughs> Do the feeder tendrils also, give them a little dash over with the pallid witch flesh. Helps them look a bit more pronounced and visible. It might take a little while to paint this, as I haven't painted in a few weeks, actually. A bit too much on there, but it is absorbent paint, this, very watery at the moment. If a little bit goes into the already part, there's another colour of pallid witch flesh, it's not going to really show up, as I've noticed. In fact, it'll add to the organic look. Turn it. I also have to base these afterwards. Should be a different video entirely, or there will be showing how to make probably an industrial infested bases, which is what it sound, what it sounds like. The underhive sort of theme to it as well. Quite worry that again. Absorb some of that out of that gap. I'm going to need to put more Carolberg in that gap, not an issue. Very strong colour though, you only need a very tiny amount. Oh, that'll do. As I said, very, very tiny amounts needed. Fine. Once it dries, right. get some of this. Try and get it dry. Maybe let a little patch dry on this palette would be best, and work from that. Doing the ears again. Very small ears. Ooh, very nice. Let's come up now. Do the veiny bits. Once again. Don't have to be perfect, but do have to look at least somewhat neat. Some on the underside of this spinal ridge isn't complete. Touching it up, essentially. It's essentially been dipped in Carolberg Crimson. And then you just tidy up all the ridges and spinal bits. You would be more careful, but it's quite hard to apply. Mm. Even amounts being a watery like wash. Let's 
doing tail ridges and there's also like sort of holes or I guess organic vents connected to the tail. There's a creature with multiple arms, all this growing extra stuff would definitely generate a lot of heat. So there's quite a bit of venting present and ruptures of these muscular ruptures on the hands and arms for essentially super strength. Enough to crack through a battle tank's armor. As in for some reason in the deepest, deepest future, humans still use battle tanks. Not just flying things, hover and whatnot. Battle tanks are still widely used. Sort of guess it makes sense. Even in the distant, distant future. All that metal protecting you. But against these things that don't mean crap. Because they have diamond and hard claws. Tyranids. Well, Tyranid gene stealers do, at least, as our Tyranids do. Worth looking up their story, so many strange creatures. Yeah, they're everything from little lizards that digest things. These creatures actually eat whole worlds or whole continents and such. Yes, they eat them and turn them into even more of their race. Sort of converting them, convert the biomass. Well, not just biomass though, but even moss and trees. Pretty much anything organic is infected by tyrannid organisms and spores. So, you can't really properly kill one without burning them to nothingness. But like most creatures, they'll become inactive if most dam enough damage is done to them. I guess. In other words, shooting them. Lots. It's all from the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Named that because it takes place in that year. In the distant future. This is essentially a sort of sci-fi story, games workshop. Very watery this, gotta be careful, don't go in back into the recesses. It's quite difficult actually. Well, it was a very cold day so paint isn't really evaporating that quick. as quick as I'd like at least. Could be better that. It's okay. Here's underneath. Messed up spinal ridges under the bottom. Lots of wire. Need to them up. Lots of white needed there. Whoa, a load of washed straight in. Damn it. Very, very watery paint indeed. Not so ideal. Almost turned into the wash itself, this. It's not supposed to be, it's supposed to be a layer paint. As I said, it was drying out, but now there's obviously too much water within it. It's somewhat difficult to dry out easily, I suppose. I can manage to get some out in there, nice. A bit more pigment to that paint also. Bit of floof on that. Bunny rabbit. My house bunny. My great pets. 
Bunny Rabbits. Well, easy to care for at least. Very carefully do this. It doesn't have to be perfect, as I can still go back over it with a bit more Carolberg Crimson. Do the neck also. Small lines in this turinid. You see. Quite messed up underneath. Far too much Carlberg Crimson applied. Equals more tidy up. Still, it's probably as slow to apply the Carabur Crimson really slowly as it is to just tidy it up afterwards also. So, it's not a faster technique I suppose. quite nicely. I'm covered in paint on my little finger. <laughs> it's already dried in the knee. Oh well. So get in there with the Tyranid Gene Stealer. On the spinal ridge and the head at least. Still need to do the arms and the legs and touch up even more. Shouldn't take too long. Do that side. Water that up. It's already on the palette. That seems to be effective. My palette in. Oh, that's a bit too wet actually. Yep. Wipes off well though. A bit thicker. Taking a little while to thicken up though. Do the arms a bit, I sh should think. Very difficult to pinpoint all the musculature on these things. As you can see there's an impressive amount of muscular stuff going on. Also in sort of elbow, I guess. Probably won't show how to do all of this. Just 
just showing how to do the main components or the thorax, the head, the back, and I am on a leg. And then I'll show the uh, rest of the brood. Probably post pictures of the whole finished brood elsewhere on my Dakar Dakar, probably on my Instagram. I actually haven't been on in a while for reasons. Get the hands done also. Claws, I mean. There are hands there. There are also the extra pair, which are diamond hand rending claws. Nasty stuff. And the feeder tendrils, which in game terms allows you to suck the brains out of your enemy, which gives you tactical information about enemy movements and such. I mean, these creatures to avoid ambushes and whatnot. Essentially their version of intelligence gathering spy sort of deal. These are infiltrators. Oops, very difficult to get the hands musculature here. I need to tidy that up. Probably will. Although they're all knuckles, they need to be painted. Because knuckles definitely are bony sort of protuberance, knuckles. Although I don't think Tyranny Gene Steeders punch, but it could be wrong. They're hyper intelligent after all. Come to eat your brains, <laughs> literally, and worse, digest your continent. So, definitely a sort of creature that's difficult to control. In Warhammer, it usually means the end of a world if these things arrive. So, sort of happy with that hand. Could do a little bit more on the musculature. Mm -hmm. A little sort of bit of caribou crimson showing around the sort of muscle vents, I guess you'd call them. Generate a lot of heat, as I said. Extra arms, or I know. Super strength. As you can see here, these vents. Very difficult to paint. Very small. Paint for a while longer. Do the do leg, as I sure said. And then I'll show the diorama in the background for a few minutes. That will look pretty cool. Sort of stand I'm using for painting. It's off an old bastion paint. That was one of the first things I painted, actually, forever ago. Which is actually not too bad. <laughs> So, which arm did I do? Done that arm. I'll do the oh, leg on the same side. Essentially, bigger version of the arm. Much larger muscular. It actually makes it a little bit easier to paint. Since you can use larger brush strokes. The kneecap can be a bit of an issue. You need to sort of 
line around it, make it look a bit neat. Very, very watery that paint going again, damn it. If I can manage. It's just neatening up the knee line, as it were, and make the knee more rounded and pronounced using the cowbird. Not sure what rim colour to use on these once I've based them. These infested bases, which is actually a sort of technique to that, which I will show. Very simple and very effective. Not what you'd expect either. Using household components. Just, just one of the things you sort of randomly stumble upon when you're making Warhammer and you spill things you'll see how would spillages make a infested base? you'll have to find out in the next video after I've painted some I think I'll do some scrapping show how to say get to the good bits inside of basic household tech because there's a lot of electrical components inside that do sell if you know what to look for actually made a fair bit of money doing that got to extract them in good condition though So that means no burnings to recover the scrap. All has to be done manually with muscle strength. Uh, leg muscles coming along quite nicely. Happy with that. Also the um, ankle. Strange word, ankle. <laughs> well, there's multiple ankles on these. There's a little and a big ankle. Freaky. Monsters. <laughs> multiple ankles. Sinister. Not too damn very lucky, making weird scratchy noises. It wants to join in. <laughs> lucky is my name of my rabbit. She's a good girl. Good girl rabbit. Also a rescue bunny, so. As I rescued her from the middle of a busy road. What the fuck? I don't know. What was she doing there? My bunny. Wasn't gonna leave her there anyway. Obviously escaped from somewhere. Got scared running up the road, got lost, and then just sort of stopped. I think I picked it up because I had lots of experience with bunny rabbits. As in, my last one lived for well over 10 years. Thirteen years. My rabbit was named Fluffy. I named Lucky Lucky because it was lucky that I found her in the middle of the road. 
seconds of very nasty thing happening. Bloody busy road also. Not good. So I'm happy I saved that bunny. He loves my lucky. Very good bunny. Well, oh, she's grown up to be at least. <laughs> so that's the leg done. Ligaments and such. Ah, it's a little bit left underneath. Might as well finish that. If I can get the brush to get to that sort of oof, there we go. Oh. Oh, barely even see what I'm doing. Oh, I got it. Never mind. I'll finish that up a day at a time because I only need to do the one leg and three arms as you can see it's quite annoying to do that many arms and legs don't want to spill that stuff I spilled it before it's really not good <laughs> so here's what the whoa that's the wrong one. That's the very same one that I uh, have there, as you can see. Not too much difference, but that one's been tidied up significantly. So I just do the same to that with the head. That's the completed one. That one is being worked on still. So put that one back. And I'll also put that one over there and we'll have a little look at the diorama. What it looks like with the whole brood crawling around. Get my camera off its stand for this. So focus. That's an infestation. That thing there is a moor on, on a world where these things infest stuff with their nasty spores. And also some strange mushrooms. Shipping containers. Painted these also. They're all weathered and such. I've done the full works on these containers, they're very nice. I remember I was very proud of these at one point. You can see they're very cool looking with the Tyranid cargo that is spitting out of them. Let's have a little inspection close up of the Tyranids. That one's got toxin toxic sacks which are poisonous as you can see and sort of green hued claws which is a just a green wash applied over the caribou crimson on top and there's the finished feeder tendril one which will be the same as that one in the background over there that's getting worked on got some others here that's another one of them toxic venom sack ones these ones have dart shooters in their mouths look at that they shoot like darts out in order to ensnare prey they think they're called barbed stranglers lovely name <laughs> all painted at an earlier time to go with these shipping containers that was actually built out of junk and those are green stuff bits Green stuff you see me use in a previous video quite a while ago. Most of this tower is made with green stuff. With this depot of cargo. Which I assume was for some sort of alien experiments upon these. I guess that would be the story. 